Okay, John, well, you've let me know that your crystal is coming, so I want to get on this uh, so we can jump ahead. This is your H557 um, uh, five, five, uh, that you uh, have had since new. It has your initials on the back there. I'm looking forward to getting this thing all nice and shiny clean. I can't believe that crystals are so hard to find with these. All right, let's 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 jump. It's always interesting to see with the, because the H556 and the H558 are, are very, very common. They only have a few things that are different. The H557 is different, of course, because of the square case, but it has the, it has the, I think the, the these, these back plates are still uh, the same. A little bit of moisture stuff in here, a little bit of green, nothing major. Your uh, original spring bars are all all, all warped. It's, I give you new ones anyway, but it's always interesting to see what the years do to these things. Not too terribly dirty though. You do a good job of keeping your watch clean. So slowly pulling it apart. I always like to go a little careful with these. Anyway, here's your stem, and you can see the ancient crown seal that's on there. It is just as hard as plastic, which is how that happens with these. So I'll get that off here and we will put in a new one. I'll do that in just a minute. Uh, so far, I haven't seen anything. I, when I opened up and I pulled the movement, I smelled a little bit of that sharp acid smell, but only a, just a touch of it. Don't be alarmed, it's just something I noticed. Okay, so we've got the back off. You can see the circuit there. I think the biggest thing I'm seeing is it just, it's dirty. Uh, you can see it's got all these little flicks and flakes and dust and things like that that have worked their way into the movement over the years. But we clean and replace all the seals and everything and get this thing super shiny. It'll be nice. You can see the the back of the train there underneath all this stuff. This is the spring for the alarm. Obviously, that's your coil. This is your oscillating crystal. CMOS is here. This is the assembly for the stem and stuff. It's kind of a weird, again, as usual with Seiko, their crazy obsession with using springs. So the, this stuff is all sort of like, it's like... um building a, a, a house of cards. It has structure and it works, but it's not bolted together as much as it's just sort of keeping everything else in check. This right here, that's your variable trimmer for doing accuracy adjustment. And that should be all straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. Okay, as as I see sometimes with, with these that haven't been apart for a long time or ever, it's uh, these. this is a multi-part component and you can see the bits of it are stuck together. This is the for the battery and that should not it doesn't need to be like that that should come right off but also all of these because none of this stuff is bolted together you see that lcd panel it's only being held in place by those gray strips those that those are the connector strips that are holding that in place so i've got to pull those apart and then um i got to pull those apart and then uh clean up all those connections very carefully Get a little bleed right there i don't have a replacement but yours is okay um I don't know, I may actually, this is a 5.57. Five, I may actually have a replacement that doesn't have a bleed. It's the six and the eights that I don't have LCD screens for. Actually, I think I do have one for this. I'll look that up. If I have one, if I have, because I don't. it's rare for me to go through a 5.57. Five, if I do have one, I'll put one in there because something like this is going to get worse. Uh, it's not ever going to get better. So if we can make it so that it works for you, I'll do that. Um, in terms of the train and stuff, I mean, it's just hazy, and dirty, and there's little hairs and stuff through here. We'll clean it up, get it all clean, pull this stuff and run it through. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got real lucky. We definitely had a battery leak. It wasn't recent, but this this was underneath the, the, the plastic shield there. This stuff right there, that's... I'm going to have to get in some... I'm going to have to use... Uh, a little bit of ammonia to, to neutralize this and get that cleaned up. I mean, the rest of it looks okay, but whenever I see this, because this battery acid, this this fibrous black plastic, it's almost like a Bakelite that this stuff is made of. Battery acid hates it, and it just crumbles into fibers. But I'll get that cleaned up. This is that. This little liar shaped thing, that's the selector when you're rotating the crown back and forth. Is it goes this way, tick, 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 or this way, tick, 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 and it makes connections and tells the circuit to do different things. Okay. First major component failure. 
Remember I told you about battery acid and uh, how much it hates this black plastic. This is where your battery would have been. See that crack? Look at that. Cracked right through, right on the support. I do have these. I mean, I could, darn it, I could reuse this one, but when these start to degrade because of whatever, battery acid or whatever the heck it is, then you're, it's, it's the beginning of a process and we don't want to, we don't want to keep that going. We want to get that out of there. Okay, so I do have these, so you're going to be getting a new one. Well, <clears throat> so what we've got now is, uh, I, when I take these things apart, I always want to be very careful. People think that a quartz is pretty simple, but actually these H55Xs are real, they're delicate. And they have to be done very carefully, and it's, uh, it's real tough. So this is actually, relatively speaking, quite easy, which is getting out the crystal without dam damaging this plastic bezel under seating thingy boo. Anyway, there is the, there's the, this is the nylon gasket that goes in there. There's the old crystal, and I got this thing apart. I just have to pull those buttons. Okay, well, I'm in the process now of rebuilding. I'm sorry, my cold is getting worse, and I'm kind of at the end of my working day, so I don't know how much more I'm going to get done today, but we will see. I would like to get it done so that it can run through the weekend, but I really am not feeling that great. But anyway, this all went together nicely. You can see that acid got all cleaned up. Uh, I'm in the process now of rebuilding this section here that has the LCD panel. I did find an LCD panel for this model. I'm, I need to test it basically to see if it's good. Uh, this is the new, this is the new, uh, they call it the block. That is the new, there's your old broken block. There's the new good one. So now we're, I'm busy rebuilding all this stuff together to get that where it needs to be. We'll see. I'm not 100% sure if this uh, LCD panel is going to work or not, um, but we will see. Well, it's back together. The LCD screen I had did not work. LCD panel was not good. So we had to go with the original. It, it, it works in every way. The other one had all kinds of dead segments. Anyway, not bad for just eyeballing it. I literally eyeballed it. I haven't adjusted this at all. That's pretty decent. We'll see where the numbers drop into um, over the weekend, but uh, it's really, it's my quitting time and I do not feel great. So I'm gonna pull the plug and we'll get back to it. But this is the, that was really, that was the hard part. Getting these things back together is always tough because you've got all these little interspliced layers that are all held in place by basically spring tension. There, there are four screws that are on the back of this thing, but the vast majority of it is held together literally by sp springs and clips and stuff like that. So this number is going to drop as these quartz movements run in. They tend to, the accuracy tends to get a little bit lower. Uh, it just, it's the, the way that it is as the, as, lubri as lubricants move through. So giving it some time is a good idea and it'll, then I'll be able to drop it back up. But Hey man, that's a great place to start. Very happy with that. Cool. Okay. Well, I think that's it. I'm going to pull a plug. Okay. So here we are. The, uh, my cold has not yet killed me, but, uh, we're here next day. Here's your case. You can see the basic case elements. And we have case back. This hair here, somebody at some point, looks like they glued your, this, uh, uh, this speaker, this conductor speaker plate diddly thing. And it got a hair caught in there. I'm not going to go to the trouble of removing that. It doesn't do anything. It's not flapping around or anything. There's your buttons, your case all clean, case back, here's your clips, and here, of course, is the crystal. I'm pretty excited about that. All kudos to you for tracking that down. Always nice to see. Brand new from Seiko. Only a couple decades late. Okay, cool. 
So I'm going to then, what I'm going to do is assemble the case and then I'll assemble the rest of the watch. And I mean, beyond basic testing, I mean, that's, that's really, that's about it. Uh, the seals for these buttons are unusually small. I do have a couple of them, which is good because I need two. Uh, the crown uses a standard um, 006 button. That's fine. Uh, I don't know. That's really, that's really about it, man. I want to, I want to push forward. I want to get this done for you. Okay. It's just, <clears throat> pardon me. Just, it's always nice to show and see what these cases look like after they're so clean. And here, the, the buttons are back in, all greased up with their brand new seals in place, which you can see right there. Nice, slick feel. And you can definitely feel it grabbing a little bit, but it's not uh, gripping. Now it's time to put on the C-clips, which is always a little bit of a challenge. But with the right technique, everything will be just fine. Okay, let me, let me do that. And so there they are. C-clips are in place. Oops, come on, stop spinning on me. You can see where they are, so that it's all nice and clipped in the way it ought to be. Now it's time to drop the movement in. I'm sorry, drop the crystal in. Let's get that done. And there we are. After an adjustment. Two one hundredths of a second per day. Ah, uh, three one hundredths. But these are not quite as easy to dial in as tight as like a 7549, but or 7548, but they're still good and variable, and you can still get very tight. That is very tight. Okay, let me turn this off here. <clears throat> Everything works as it should. There's your alarm test. Here's your, your light bulb. You can see chronograph goes to zero. Uh, there's the current date and time for you, for your location. So uh, let me put the bracelet on it now. And there we go. All done. Here is the uh, the old stuff. So you've got your, uh, oh, your, damn it, the other seals, the big seals are over there. Well, crap. Um, I'm also going to include your old seals, your case back seal and your old crystal seal. Uh, here is the old block, spacer block is what that's called. That's going to go in there. There it is, in all of its glory. Super clean and ready to come home. Thank you so much for your, your patience and your help and your cheerfulness and everything. I, I really appreciate it. I love working on watches like this that are special to somebody because it makes me feel like I'm part of a special process. I, I, I wish you very long life and much enjoyment with your, with your watch. All right. Thank you so much.